So we're officially in spooky season and I thought it was about time I gave you a wrap up of all the horror I've been reading recently. This is a combination of new releases as well as a particular backlist classic that I should have read years ago. I told myself I never would and I finally got up the courage to try it and I'm going to tell you about that experience. So all that being said, let's get started. Let's start with the horror new releases. The first one being Vampires of the El Norte and this is a book that is set in Mexico in I believe the 1800s during the Mexican and American War and in the story we follow an individual who possibly hopefully it's not a spoiler from the title is a vampire and they team up with another individual trying to survive. This is a book I picked up because I've recently really enjoyed a lot of Mexican horror that's been published in the last few years and so I did want to try this one out. It is historical horror which if you know is not my personal taste. I just don't have a lot of background in history and definitely knew very little about this point of Mexican history. So this is a book that I very much appreciated what it was doing. I thought it had well-drawn characters. I liked the representation of the vampires being these monsters and not this overly romanticized version of them. And I like that I learned a little bit about history through the reading of this. But it very much is a case where I appreciated reading this one a little bit more than I enjoyed it. And I do think that a book like this really comes down to personal taste rather than the book being good or bad. Simply, I was reading this book just feeling like it wasn't for me. And I didn't have any other really strong criticisms about the book other than it not being to my personal taste, which is my fault, not the author. So I would recommend this one if you love perhaps slower paced historical fiction stories that are going to give you insight into that period while having a lot of focus on these characters and their relationships. It is a vampire story, but I do think it has a lot of appeal for those of us that don't necessarily reach for that genre. Next, let's talk about Red Rabbit. This is another new release in the story. We follow these witch hunters that are going around hunting for this witch. This is set in a Western style setting, and so it has that background, kind of similar to the last book I talked about. In the story, I did find the characters to be less interesting and so given the fact that I don't normally love a lot of historical fiction and I can be a little bit hit or miss with folk horror, I just think it has to be done right. I like the idea of the story a little bit more than the actual reading experience. So again, this is not to my personal taste, but I wasn't completely impressed by this one, even for what it was doing. So I would cautiously recommend checking it out if you love Western style folk horror and this is hitting all of your buzzwords. But if you're looking for a really witchy story, I don't think you'll necessarily get those feels from this one. And again, I think that the characters were fine, but they could have been punched up and been a little bit more memorable because I think it would have enhanced story a lot in my own reading experience at least. Next, let's talk about The Graveyard Ship by Maria Lewis. And this is a horror thriller that follows a young woman who runs a radio show called The Graveyard Shift. On it, she discusses cult horror and all those things with her listeners who are very passionate. One day, and it's on the back of the book, someone calls in and appears to be murdered right on the air. This is, of course, a very disturbing event. And then from there, they go along with their sister trying to figure out what is happening. Someone is possibly trying to reach out to them as a host. And and things just become too real too fast. This is one that I would highly recommend to those of you that share my love for the ghost radio that I've talked about several times on my channel here. And I would also recommend this one to those of you that love what Riley Sagers does. Now, I know not everyone loves Riley Sagers' work at this point. It's become very controversial. I recently discussed it. But what I love about his work, whether or not you like his execution, is the fact that he plays around with thriller books that are written for people who normally read horror. They're written in a way that is meant to be a love letter to horror fans. And that is exactly what I would describe here. So if you're looking for a horror book, I will admit that I did not find this book to be scary at all, but I don't think that was the intention of the author. Instead, this was just so much fun. There were so many references to horror things and movies and all those things adjacent to the genre. And you can tell that the author, or at least I strongly believe they have a deep love for the genre themselves. And it just shone through the pages. It was fun. It was entertaining. It had, again, those creepy elements with the radio. This is one I read physically, but I think it would be great on audio just because it does have that radio aspect to it and just highly recommend this one. It was so much fun. Definitely the fun Halloween book that you need to pick up this season. 
I thought it was just exactly what I was looking for. It's such a good break between some of the heavier books in this list. Next, let's talk about Reykjavik, which is a thriller book that is set in Iceland over two different timelines. In I believe the 1950s, there is this 14 year old girl who goes missing and then 30 years later, there is a police investigator who is trying to figure out what happened. I am a huge sucker for two things, missing person stories and stories about cold cases. And so the fact that this story involved both of those elements really made me excited for it. I've previously read one of these authors work and I've never read anything by the other author and so I was eager to try them out. Iceland is a place that has always captured my attention. I've never traveled there but I deeply want to and I've read so many fiction books that I've loved based around the area. I just think it's a fascinating place and so I went to this book as you can imagine with high hopes and given all that build you can probably guess that I was really disappointed by this one. I found the story to be not that interesting and again it was not that interesting to someone who is naturally very interested in all the elements of the story. I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the past and present characters just didn't feel very memorable. They felt very stilted and perhaps it's the translation, perhaps it's the other author coming in, but I just don't think it's one of Johansson's best work and I didn't find it to be that great. So if you're going to check out some Icelandic thrillers, I would recommend going elsewhere. I found this one to be fine. If you're a completionist with their work, you might want to check this one out, but it was a real disappointment just because I know how incredibly atmospheric this author can make their work and this one just fell really flat. I think that's what I was missing basically is the atmosphere. I really didn't have a sense or experience of Iceland as I at least imagined it to be as I usually do with their work. Instead I felt like this book could have been placed anywhere. It could have been New York City or Chicago and I wouldn't have known the difference other than the references to the actual places but that's one that I thought I would love and turned out to be just okay. All right let's switch gears and talk about about the classic of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which was on my fall TBR, and yes, I have read it. This is a book that I put off reading for quite a while because I knew it was very literary in nature, and given the time period that it was written, I was worried about how I would connect with it as a reader who tends to prefer more modern works. And this is one that I have now a great appreciation for. I'm very glad I read it. This is a book that I chose to put in my horror content, but honestly could have just as easily put into my science fiction. I definitely see the overlap, and in fact, I would argue that it is more of a science fiction book in terms of the themes that it explores. You have this scientist who is trying to push the limit, bring people to life, and you get to see them play with nature and their lust for knowledge that leads them down this path. In terms of the horror, it really, in my mind, didn't feel scary, and I think that it's more a story that has been used in media and the movies to turn into the monster of Frankenstein that we know from cult culture. Now in terms of my reading experience, I have to admit that I found this book to be very dense. It is written in an older language compared to other classics that I've mentioned are quite readable today, like something like Dracula. This book was a lot more daunting to get through. I found myself having to really slow down, pay attention, and just rereading passages to make sure that I was understanding everything I was reading. It's written beautifully, so it's no criticism of the book. But this is just a fact, and I'm fully honest on camera, that I'm someone who does have a preference for newer work that I just tend to find it easier to understand and so forth. And it definitely brought back those feelings of being a high school student and feeling very intimidated by the books I was reading in school and really not understanding something. So this book in ways made me uncomfortable because I'm kind of going outside of the box of reviewing I feel comfortable to do. So to read a book and to tell you all that I didn't fully grasp every detail, theme, and nuance within it on my first go. It's just the truth, but a lot of people don't like to admit that on camera. It doesn't make you a very popular booktuber when you admit that you aren't an expert on everything. So this is a book I'm very glad I read because it gave me a better understanding of what the story of Frankenstein is, even though I knew the adaptations, all the movies were different, and I've never actually seen any of them, I still had a lot of preconceived ideas about what this book was or what this book contained that it didn't end up being, and so I like that by reading the original work it actually helped me to separate the media version of Frankenstein or specifically Frankenstein's monster from the original purposed work and the again the themes ideas behind it which again lean much more into science fiction in my mind. So I like this work. I appreciate it. I do need to reread it again. 
but I'll leave that till maybe next year. Highly recommend it for those of you that are interested either in science fiction and horror classics and want to see the foundation of those two genres as they got married together. So let's talk about Suicide Town by Boris Bakic. This is a book that follows a man who is looking to write his next book and in doing so trying to find inspiration he goes online, he discovers creepypasta and looks up the story of this town where supposedly people go and then have an urge to commit suicide. Given the subject matter of this book I will give a general content warning for anyone who has triggering feelings surrounding suicide. If that is not for your thing please click away. I completely understand you matter and there is help out there. But I do appreciate that a book like this in my mind handled the subject matter fairly well. It didn't feel like it was trying to use that in a way to be overly sensationalized and just telling a story but I do think that it has to be considered kind of the place that someone is in when they pick up a book like this. Given my love of things like Junji Ito, the premise of this book was right up my alley. This book was recommended to me by a friend who sent me a copy and I can see why because to me a story with a town where everyone commits suicide just feels right up Junji Ito's Alley, who again writes a lot of perhaps controversial stories about inappropriate things that don't otherwise get touched on by other authors. So I love the setup. I loved him on the internet looking up the details, finding out if the town was real, and then going from there. My criticism of the story is the fact that I found the author's writing to be incredibly weak, which is unfortunate. I hate when this happens with an indie title where they have a really great idea and I'm just not very impressed by their prose. So for me, especially once you actually got to the town, I found the writing to be very noticeable repetitive, the dialogue, the conversations, all of it was just very repetitive in nature as I'm saying here and so it did take away a touch from the story and made me enjoy the story less. Really cool idea but I do find at this point in time that if an author has weak prose sometimes I can't look past it, sometimes I can but in this case it kind of got in the way of what otherwise would have been a really great story. Next let's talk about Scan Lines by Todd Kessling which happens to be another book with content warnings for suicide so be aware. This is a horror novella that is involving this tape of this person, this public figure who committed suicide back in the 1980s. And this is a real event that actually happened. I did do a little bit of Googling. But within the story, there is the idea that when someone actually watches the tape and sees it, it actually causes them to then go and have suicidal thoughts themselves and commit suicide. So it's very much a story written in the vein of something like the classic Ring. And so I do really enjoy stories that involve technology where you have some kind of of technological entity that is causing people to do things. So again, in terms of premise and setup, right out my alley. I also love what this book is doing on a higher scale because as many of you are probably aware, it's sadly true that if someone commits suicide, it can often inspire other people in their life that are at risk to commit the same act. And so I think it's very interesting that they actually turn it into a cycle and kind of suggest that there's this underlying entity there. But at its core, the concept, the idea of that being triggering is sadly very true. So I think it's a very smart book. It deals with some very heavy subject matter. I like that this book has an opening at forward from the author acknowledging the heaviness of the topic, offering help with suicide hotlines, and I really felt that that helped to set the tone of this book and acknowledge the seriousness of the topic that they were trying to grapple with. That being said, I thought this book was great. I was gripped into it. Again, it's short, it's fast, it's well done, and I did think that the prose was great. Basically, this is the kind of indie horror that reminds me of why I used to read a lot more indie horror and gives me hope that I should be reading more of it again because if every indie horror was like this, I should definitely be reading a lot more. This was very well done. Again, not for everyone, content warnings all abound, but if you can handle it, it's dark and disturbing and really well done. And I also read The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a horror novella that is written in the way of it appearing to be a movie transcript following this slasher film. This is one that I did on audio, which I do recommend as the best way to go about it. I do think if I was reading it on the page, I would find it a little bit more irritating, but having it read aloud, which makes more sense sense if something is meant to be a script or a movie script kind of fits the story. That being said, it was kind of a gimmicky concept for a story that in my mind was too long for what it was trying to do. And again, this is only a novella. If it had been a short story, maybe I would have enjoyed it more, but it was definitely a case where I was done with the story well before it was finished and it even wasn't that long. So I know Stephen Graham Jones is a well-beloved author. I do really enjoy some of his other books. This one was not to my taste. It has low ratings on Goodreads and I kind of see why 
why it's not one I would personally recommend. And finally, I also read Rust and Stardust. This is a fictional retelling of the real life story that inspired Lolita. So as I've talked about before on my channel, there was an actual case of a young girl named Sally who disappeared, was stolen away by a man. And that real life case inspired the story of Lolita. Now I have read a nonfiction book that gives the story of the actual case of Sally. I do recommend reading it. It really helps to enlighten you as the reader as to the background there. And then from there, what I would do is recommend reading something like this. So I would say you want to ideally know the first original case, and then this then fictionalizes. The character in the story is again named Sally, and we follow them as they are picked up by this man who takes them away. And what I like with the story is a few things. One is that it's very true to the case. While it is fictionalized, having read the nonfiction version, I can say that it's very close and it tried to include as many accurate details as possible. And what the author obviously does is fill in the blank by giving us insight into what Sally might have been thinking and other things as well. We also in the story get the perspective of Sally's mother. And that has always been a huge question mark for a lot of people reading about the case is how could this woman allow their young daughter to go away with this man? Because the setup up there just feels bizarre as a parent. And so you get to see insights into what was possibly going through her mind in that situation. I think the book is so well done. The character work is amazing. And again, for a book that handles some rather triggering, upsetting content, I thought it was very well done so that it's not meant to excite or be explicit in any way. And so it's much more implied. The reader can figure out what is going on. And instead, it's much more about the characters. And so if you're looking for a story that's going to explore and ponder around how these situations situations come up, what happens, how people get in those situations of being a victim, and the circumstances and people around them that lead them there. It's heavy, it's dark, it's beautiful, highly recommended. This was so well done. Another gift or recommendation from a friend that was spot on. Cannot stop thinking about this book, highly recommend. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And let me know, what are you reading this spooky season? If you're new to my channel and want to stick around, I do read horror, thriller, science fiction, and other dark things. If you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a big thumbs up. You can share it around online. You can drop a comment, even if it's just a Halloween pumpkin or something spooky like that, or a ghost. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.